Welcome to Reign of Grace. This program is brought to you by Reign of Grace Media Ministries, an outreach ministry of Eager Avenue Grace Church in Albany, Georgia. It is our pleasure and privilege to present to you the gospel message of the sovereign grace and glory of God in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that today's program will be a blessing to you. Thank you for listening, and now for today's program. Welcome to our program today. I'm glad you could join us. And if you'd like to follow along in your Bibles, turn in your Bibles to the book of Philippians chapter 3, Paul's epistle or letter to the church at Philippi chapter 3. And this message today is part two and the final uh, message on, on this subject, faith, repentance, and perseverance. And last week I did the first part of this chapter, Philippians 3, mainly dealing with faith and repentance, but also with perseverance. Faith, the gift of God, the scripture says, uh, I quote it all the time and you're, I'm sure you're familiar with it, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, which says that by grace are you saved. That means salvation is unearned, undeserved, not conditioned on us, the grace of God is and salvation is conditioned on Christ who fulfilled those conditions. So for by grace are you saved through faith. That is by means of faith. And that faith is God given. He says, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now some people, some commentators say the it there refers to all of salvation. Some say it, it applies only to the word faith. doesn't matter. It's all a gift from God. If it refers to all of salvation, that includes faith, and it's all a gift. Faith is not something that you have or I have naturally. I said last week, I said people believe that, that uh, sinners have a spark of goodness. They find a preacher who can fan the flame, and it blows up into faith. No, that's not the way it happens. By nature, we are all fallen and ruined in Adam and born spiritually dead in trespasses and sin. We have no goodness, no righteousness, and no desire for salvation God's way. Now, even the dead, spiritually dead natural man can want salvation his way, but he doesn't want it God's way. And that's why faith is a gift of God. It's, it's equivalent to knowledge, the knowing what God has done in Christ. So for by grace are you saved, through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Most people today make faith a work because they say, well, Christ died for everybody and he's trying to save you and you just have to believe to put your stamp of approval on it and seal the deal. And that's not what the Bible teaches. Not at all. Faith is the gift of God that drives a sinner to receive Christ as the Lord, his righteousness, as his salvation, as his redeemer, and all of that. So Paul deals with that. And he, he said, well, look at verse 9 uh, in Philippians chapter 3. Paul said that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now, first of all, the foundation there is not our faith in Him, but His faithfulness to accomplish what He uh, uh, was commissioned to do before the foundation of the world. He had a work to do. And, and that work was to redeem His people from their sins by the offering of Himself satisfying the justice of God. Christ was set up before the foundation of the world to be the surety of His people. And what that means is that the sin debt of God's chosen people was imputed, it was counted, it was uh, uh, charged to Him. He took that debt and, that, and He promised to pay that debt by His life, His blood on the cross. And out of, that, out of that redemptive work comes righteousness that God has imputed, charged, accounted to His people. Now, this 
righteousness which Christ wrought out in Christ Himself. It's the righteousness which is of God by faith. We receive it by God-given faith. And so Paul writes, verse 10, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto His death. Verse 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And what he's saying there is this, whatever God has in store and whatever way God does it, that, I, that for me to enter heaven's glory and live eternally with Him in Christ, that's what I want. That's what I desire. That way that glorifies God and gives me no room to boast. All of grace. Now, in verse 12, now we talked about faith, repentance, and now perseverance. What is perseverance? Perseverance is a believer, a sinner saved by grace, continuing in the faith. Persevering in the faith. Struggling through not in his own power, not in his own goodness, and not even really in his own will, but by the power, the goodness, the grace, and the will of God. You see, perseverance of the saints, which the Bible teaches, is not the foundation of entering glory. It's the result, it's the fruit of God's preserving grace. Why will a sinner who is truly saved persevere unto the end? It's because God preserves them by His grace. And how, how does He preserve them? Well, He preserves them by His power, His goodness, His will, His working all things together for good to them that love God who are the called according to His purpose. God cannot and will not charge them with their sin. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. He cannot be condemned. Who can condemn us? It's Christ that died. Yea, rather is risen again, seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for us. You see, as long as Christ is on the throne, as long as Christ is making intercession for His people, they cannot lose their salvation. They cannot be condemned. And so Paul says here, and that, that's, that's what perseverance is. But now listen to what he says in verse 12. Now, and keep it in context now. Look at verse 11 again. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Now what is it that Paul had not attained? He had not attained the resurrection of the dead. That's going to happen when Christ returns again and all the children of God, all of His true uh, people, will be caught up and gathered together with Him, vindicated before the whole universe. You see, there are things that Christians have attained already. We've attained salvation, not by our works, not by our personal uh, attainments or our uh, personal will. We've attained salvation by the grace of God in the Lord Jesus Christ. We, and Paul says here in verse 12, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Their believers now have a perfection, but it's not in themselves. It's a perfection of righteousness which can only be found in Christ and it's imputed to them. That's their legal perfection. God cannot charge me with sin because He charged my sins to Christ. Christ satisfied the justice of God and I have His righteousness imputed to me. I stand in Him, not having mine own righteousness. See, Paul said that earlier, which is of the law. So I do have a perfection, not in me, but in Christ. But there is, a, there is no perfection in me. I'm a sinner, saved by the grace of God. I have to struggle. I have to fight. I have to war against the flesh every day of my life. And so that's what Paul's talking about here. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. I've not already been glorified. I'm, I'm in this body of death. Paul describes it as a wretched man. Remember, remember in Romans 7, 24, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ my Lord. 
Now, now, so that's what he's talking about. Well, I haven't attained perfection in myself. One day I will attain it by the grace of God, by the power of God, by the goodness and the will of God. I'll be glorified. And I'll shed this vile body and I'll be given a new spiritual glorified body without any contamination of the flesh, without any influence of the flesh. So what do I do until then? Look at verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. Now that's perseverance. Well, what are you following after? Well, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. I follow after that which God has made me and which I'm going to be in Christ Jesus. And I want to, appre I want to lay hold of, I want to apprehend that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In other words, what he's saying, and it may sound a little confusing, but it's really not. What he's saying is Christ has got hold of me and I'm going to continually keep getting hold of him. Hold on for dear life. That's what he's saying. That's perseverance. Now again, no believer does that of his own power, of his own will, of his own goodness. It's all of the grace of God. The Bible says that God who began this good work will finish it. And he says in verse 13, Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended. I haven't yet realized and been glorified and perfectly glorified so that I'm now without sin. But this one thing I do, he says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. What I was, forget it. What I'm going to be in Christ, that's what I want on my mind. That's what I'm reaching for, to be like Christ. Not in order to be saved, not trying to earn my rewards in heaven, but because God has given me every blessing every benefit of salvation freely, all in Christ, conditioned on Him, secured by Him. It's all a free gift. As a believer in Christ, I realize that every, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there's no shadow of turning, no variableness. He's God. He changes not. Therefore, I'm a son of Jacob and not consumed, a sinner saved by grace. And that's what I'm looking forward to, see? That's, what we're, that, that's where we're reaching forth unto things which are before. I don't want to dwell on the past. I don't, want to, uh, I don't want to let the past be a cancer inside of me, eating away, me making me feel guilt. I want to look to Christ. We run the race of grace looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's perseverance. Perseverance is not a sinner trying to hold on to salvation by his own power and his own goodness. And if he doesn't, if he's not powerful enough, if he's too weak, or if he's not good enough, he loses it. My friend, that's a false gospel. That's a false salvation. And anybody who counts themselves saved under such a system is self-righteous and proud. No, my friend, let me tell you something. If God were to let go of me right now, I'm sitting here with an open Bible. If God were to let go of me right now, I'd sink into hell. That's what I'm saying. He saves me. He keeps me. He'll bring me to glory. Therefore, based upon the security of the saved by His grace in Christ, I'm going to reach forth on the things which are before. Verse 14. Uh, Philippians 3, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It is a prize. But it's not just to those who do better than others. Every true believer will receive the same prize because it's all of grace. No believer earns it. No believer deserves it. Therefore, whether you're a preacher and preach thousands of sermons or you're just a, a lay person who sweeps the floor. It doesn't matter. 
We're all in the kingdom of God and saved by His grace. And that's it. And my friend, if you ever realize that not, not, nothing you have is earned or deserved, not even the next breath you take, let alone salvation and the inheritance of glory in Christ, you'll realize that you don't have anything to boast in except Christ. That's what he said in Philippians 3, 3. We rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And it's a high calling. I often say that true Christianity is advanced citizenship. You've really got to want it. But it's God who puts that want to in His people. It's a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It's higher than anything that we could find on this earth. The best that religion on earth, earthly religion, human religion can give, is salvation conditioned in some way, at some stage, in some, uh, to some degree, on you. And that's deadly. But this is serving God as a willing, loving bond slave. That's what perseverance is all about. It's struggling every day, fighting the warfare of the flesh and the spirit, feeding upon God's word in the power of the spirit, looking to Christ totally, always, every day for salvation, for uh, benefits, for reward. It's all in Him pressing toward that mark of God, seeking to obey Him, it is a struggle because it's a high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He says in verse 15 of Philippians 3, Let us therefore as many as be perfect, that is be complete, not be sinless. He said we're sinless in Christ, but he said as many as be complete, that is we are sinners saved by the grace of God, be thus minded. Be this minded, pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in, of God in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. God's going to keep His children. God's going to show and teach His children. See? He's not going to let His children continue on in error and in legalism and in, as mercenaries. He's going to reveal it. He says in verse 16, Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Now, what have we already attained? Well, if we're believers, we've attained salvation. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not waiting for the conclusion of that if I do my part or do my best or or rack up my points? No. I've already attained it. How did I attain it? By the grace of God. So let's walk by the same rule. What? By the grace of God. And let us mind the thing, same thing. The grace of God. It's all of grace. So he says in verse 17, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as you have uh, us for an example. This is the way Paul was walking. Paul didn't, Paul didn't set himself up uh, as someone to be honored and magnified above his station. He always pointed sinners to Christ. Christ has all the glory. We have no confidence in the flesh, and we rejoice confidence in Christ. But Paul says, says he's saying this, I'm walking... I'm, I'm following after the prize, the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus by grace. Now, I'm an example. You do the same as me. Follow me as I follow Christ. He says in verse 18, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19, Whose, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, their appetites, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. There are preachers who claim, people who claim to be Christian, who walk after the flesh. Now, you say, well, that's talking about uh, Christian. They claim to be Christian, but they're immoral people. Not necessarily. Again, remember how Paul started this about the Jewish uh, unbelievers who claim to be Christian, and they wanted to bring believers back under the law to obedience to the law in order to be saved. 
Well, these are, their glory is their shame. They're minding earthly things. They're walking contrary to the grace of God. Over in the book of Galatians, Paul mentions this. Think about this. He said in, in Galatians chapter 2, he says in verse 20, he says, uh, uh, well, verse 21, he's, uh, Galatians 2, 21, he says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, by your works of the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, if you can be made righteous by your obedience to the law, then Christ did not have to come at all. He actually came for nothing. Because Christ came to save His people from their sins by His faithfulness to keep the law and satisfy the justice of God on the cross and bring forth righteousness. Again, Romans 10, 4, I quote it all the time. Christ is the end, the fulfillment, the finishing of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Paul wrote in Galatians 6, 14, God forbid that I should glory, boast, have confidence, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when he talks about those who, whose, uh, whose end is their destruction, whose God is their belly, their appetites, he's talking about religious people too who are seeking salvation or any part of salvation by their works. That's a, that's a, a, a fleshly appetite. The Bible says that those who, are, who truly hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled the, the uh, analogy of eating there, eating and drinking. Well, if you truly hunger and thirst after righteousness by the power of the Holy Spirit in the new birth, there's only one thing that will fill you, fit, that will quench your thirst and, f and fill your hunger, and that's Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Well, back in Philippians 3 and verse 20, he says, For our conversation, now the word conversation there is literally citizenship. For our citizenship is in heaven. We're sure for heaven. If we're in Christ, if we're saved by the grace of God, if we're justified by His righteousness imputed, if God cannot lay anything to our charge, He charged it to Christ. If we're born again by the Spirit, our citizenship is in heaven. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking for Him to come again. He's going to return. In verse 21, And when he does, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Now that's what Paul was saying in perseverance. He got faith in Christ, repentance of dead works, continuing in the faith, pressing toward by the grace of God, toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He's coming again. Right now, we're waiting for Him to come. He may come in our day. He may not, but He's coming. If He doesn't come in my day, I'll go to Him. My citizenship is not on this earth. I'm here on this earth. I have to work. I have to do these things. I have to deal with people here, but my citizenship is in heaven. I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God a child of God. I'm in his family. The earthly family is, is this, this earthly brotherhood here is not my family. My bro it's Christ and all who are in him, my brethren in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. And so I'm persevering, continuing by the grace of God towards that mark, knowing that one day I'll either go to him in death. That's what happened. Precious in the, in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. To be absent from the body is to be with the Lord. Or he'll come again to receive his people. And he'll change this vile body. Paul said this body of death. To fashion it like an unto his glorious body. We see something in the scriptures of that when after he was resurrected from the dead and he walked among the disciples. And we see the things that he did. And then we have some... Uh, scriptural teaching on it in passages like 1 Corinthians 15. But there are always questions that come up that we can't answer. There's a lot we don't know about what it will be like in glory 
existing in a spiritual body forever and ever and ever, where there's no tears, no sorrow, no sickness, no pain, no death. All we know is that we'll be like Christ. But John said, 1 John 3, he said, brethren, or 1 John 3 and uh, 1 and 2, he said, brethren, it doesn't yet appear what we shall be. <clears throat> we don't know that for exactly. Uh, we know something about, but it doesn't really, we don't know the fullness of it, but we know we shall be like him. We shall see Christ as he is. And that's all according to the working whereby he is able. Now that's key in verse 21. Did you notice that? It said, the working whereby he is able. Not, we're not able. We're not able to persevere. We're not able to glorify ourselves. But he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. All things will be brought down under his feet. All his enemies will be made his footstool. Every eye, every, uh, eye is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he will subdue all things unto himself. He's, he's the sovereign God of this universe. He's working all things right now uh, for the good. All things bad and good. He's working them to good, the eternal good, for his people who love him, who have been brought to love him by the power of his grace in the spirit through Christ. And uh, who love him and who are the called according to his purpose. And what is his purpose? It's to glorify himself in the salvation of sinners through the blood and the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, it's all wrapped up in the glorious person and the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is able. We're not. But he is. And so let's press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's advanced citizenship. That's faith, repentance, and perseverance, all by the grace of God, all through Christ Jesus the Lord, based upon what he accomplished for his people. I hope you'll join us next week for another message from God's Word. We are glad you could join us for another edition of Reign of Grace. This program is brought to you by Reign of Grace Media Ministries, an outreach ministry of Eager Avenue Grace Church in Albany, Georgia. To receive a copy of today's program or to learn more about Reign of Grace Media Ministries or Eager Avenue Grace Church, write us at 1102 Eager Drive, Albany, Georgia 31707. Contact us by phone at 229-432-6969 or email us through our website at www.theletterrofgrace.com. Thank you again for listening today, and may the Lord be with you.